Jen, help me. My appetite is all over the place. Man, if I could have a dollar for every time someone said that to me, I'd be a pretty rich chick. Anyway, I want to talk today about how, you know, kind of what appetite is and the influences it for if you have lost your appetite or if your appetite is out of control the other way and you're overeating and everything. And a couple of things that you can do to help just bring it back into balance, whether it's under or over. So let's jump straight in. First off, what is an appetite? Your appetite is that desire to eat food. And generally it should be being stimulated because you're hungry. That's what it should be. Now, our appetite exists to literally tell our body, all right, you're gonna you know, run out of energy. You need energy, which is food to maintain our metabolic needs, which means living and moving around the world. So the appetite is created in our body to say, you need food to be able to keep moving and staying alive. That's what your appetite is. The challenge in life is that sometimes it goes a little bit stray and and it's pretty much close to even that people losing appetite or having an uncontrollable appetite, it kind of balances out that, you know, it's like not that more people are, have a lack of appetite or more people have a, you know, an outrageous appetite. But what we find is, and there was a really cool study that was done in Canada by the Society of Gastrointestinal Research. So all the gut chemistry kind of people. And they published some studies and, and they had a real focus on seeing what was at play when someone had an increased appetite. And the times that people had an increased appetite and they truly weren't hungry were boredom, stress, or some other high emotional kind of state. They were either seeing or smelling food that appealed to them. Like imagine you're sitting watching television or you're on Facebook at dinner time and pizza ads are pop up or something like that. And even me just saying that, I know that my phone is listening and I will end up with pizza ads. That's the, how crazy that this world is nowadays, that our devices listen to us and they throw ads at us with what we've been talking about. Um, but I will, for sure, I'll end up with pizza ads. Now it's going to be dinner time here shortly. And it's crazy that that kind of stuff could come in and influence some people, but it can. The other things that can really influence that is uh, like a routine or a habit and like special occasion, like Christmas is a classic where people will overeat even when they don't have an appetite, they just keep eating because it's that obligation kind of occasion, if that makes sense. So I will talk about that increased appetite in a moment, but first I want to talk about a loss of appetite. Now there's lots of things, the same kind of things like uh, stress, worry, overwork that can make some people have an increased appetite can absolutely make some people have a loss of appetite. And I've done so much work with people and I talk about the skinny stress heads, how you know their appetite's all over the place and reacts differently in their bodies compared to someone who uh, isn't that kind of person that internalizes their stress differently. But there's, there's lots of reasons and stress is a hundred percent part of it. Some people eat more when they're, they're stressed out and some people eat less and just can't eat when they're stressed out. So that's one. And, you know, physical things like pregnancy, some people are just, they, some women totally lose their appetite in, especially in the early stages of pregnancy. Uh, lots of ailments, you know, like liver disease and, and hepatitis and, you know, kidney failure and heart failure and some of those kind of things. Uh, recreational drugs, you know, some recreational drugs really just suppress a person's appetite big time. People might be going through uh, things like chemotherapy or be on strong medications for different things. I did a lot of work back in the 1990s with the AIDS Council and oh, such tough work. Saw such a beautiful souls dying from AIDS, uh, you know, HIV and AIDS. It was huge. And I did a lot of work as a naturopath helping them with appetite because that was a very real thing that they would just lose their appetite. So I want to talk into ways that you can increase your appetite if your challenge is that you don't have an appetite. And I, I meet people who just, you know, they eat because they know they have to live, not because they enjoy food. And they maybe they don't enjoy cooking and things like that. And they don't have that that appetite for food. It's, it's really, it's more common than you think. It really is. I've come across it a lot in my work as a naturopath. A couple of tricks that might be able to help you if you are that person who 
finds themselves with a lower appetite than you know you need to sustain your wellness. First one, number one, eat foods that look and smell appealing. Think about what you need. And I'm talking about nutritious foods, not a packet of friggin' Tim Tams or something like that. You've still got to go for the healthier options, but find something that is visually and smell wise, all that kind of thing that's appealing to you. So I'm not going to, being vegetarian, I'm not going to sit down to a big meal of meat, but I'll totally, you know, sit down to an amazingly spicy and herbal vegetable curry or something like that. And that's number two. So use herbs and spices and things to improve the flavor. Make your meals enjoyable. So whether it's something like, you know, presentation, if you're the person that needs something visually to, to be good, whether you've got music playing, or I like to, I've talked in the past about, you know, the benefits of actually laughing to play with blood sugar levels and stuff when you uh, are eating that I watch I, I watch comedies when I'm eating most meals I know the benefits to my health as I do that you want to look at eating smaller and more frequent meals through the day think at eating consistent times set an alarm to remind you that it's time to eat you know your three meals a day two snacks plan the meals the day before Plan them the day before and do any meal prep so that it's nice and easy when it's time to eat, something's there. I bang on about it all the time, but let's make sure that you're drinking enough liquids and in particularly water. Herb teas are also going to help you. My work with the AIDS Council back in the 1990s, I played a lot with the color of plates that people were eating off. And what we found is there was a really cool study that was done through Cornell about the color of plates. And what was found was that uh, if people ate food off a red plate, they ate about 22% more. The color red is associated with the emotion of passion. And so when someone sees red, whether it's red food or yellow and orange in that same kind of color spectrum, or they're on a red plate, they become more passionately hungry. So that was one that I used extensively working with HIV patients. Now, if you're the opposite, the color plays a game too, that if you are the person that you find has the an appetite that's too high, you want to eat off blue plates. So blue helps to suppress an appetite. And it's like, imagine that it's the opposite. So red's really passionate. And I was like, yeah, I want to eat this food. Versus blue, which is the color of the sky and the ocean. And it's calming and it's soothing. And it helps to slow and slow down the body's metabolism and soothe the body, which helps to curb your appetite. So if you are an over, you want to be eating off blue plates. Now, interesting that so many people eat off white plates. It's like, you know, the regular kind of dinner plates tend to be white. And white is often associated with that excessive consumption. There's this strange kind of phenomenon that happens where when you're eating off a white plate or eating white foods, same deal, that our brain forgets that white foods contain calories and it leads more to mindless eating. So if you are an overeater, an over, an over, you know, a high appetite, you might want to change from white plates to blue plates if you are eating off white dishware. Give it a try. I'm all about test and measure. Since we're talking about decreasing appetite now, let's talk about a few more ways. And, it, and it, the guts of it is about coming in with mindful eating, consciously chewing, consciously eating. One of the secrets to this is not waiting to get super hungry, not that ravenously, oh, I'm just going to devour everything. You don't want to get to there. You want to, you know, stage a day that you're having, you know, I'm, I'm the big fan of three meals a day and two snacks. Uh, you, you go too long and there's more chance if you have that high appetite that you're going to overeat. Also, don't, you know, don't be doing distractions. For me, it works for me to watch comedies and I find I actually slow down when I'm eating. And uh, it's also good as a practice to learn to like have a mouthful, put the fork down, put the, have a mouthful, put the fork down just to help slow it down. I remember years and years and years ago when I was, oh, I don't know, a long time ago, but I, I remember at one stage uh, eating all my meals with chopsticks. And because I, because at times in life I have had a overly high appetite, 
And uh, the problem is like, I can eat bloody fast with chopsticks. So and that did not slow me down. I've got to find ways to manage this differently. And so these are the things that I've, I've done to help me manage. You know, and I grew up in a family of five kids and it was like survival of the fittest to make sure you got fed. So I grew up in a household where we, we just naturally ate fast and I've had to teach myself different things to be able to manage that as I've, I've, as I've gotten older. You want to also make sure that you're breathing. So before you, you know, before you sit down to eat, just take a few big, deep, slow breaths and just ground yourself and send yourself. That helps. Taking small bites and chewing your food thoroughly instead of just inhaling it, that helps. Play, paying attention to your, your body signals that it's full. And what generally happens is that somewhere around up to 20 minutes before, your body, before you feel full, your body is actually full. But if you really tune in to your body, you'll start to feel that fullness sooner. And then you've still got the choice and habit to break if you have had that higher appetite to, to bring it into balance. But that's one thing that you can do. And ideally, live from a place of prevention and keep, you know, if there's a crap food that you eat, you know, keep it out of the house so that there's less chance of being tempted. It's like, like I said, if, you know, an ad comes on the television and says pizza, you're going to be you'll be more tempted to eat pizza. If it's in the house, easy to get at crap food, you're going to be more tempted to do that if you have that higher appetite. And we want to do things to be able to increase that feeling that we're full and we're satisfied. And to do that, it kind of makes sense. Stay away from the foods that are a long way away from nature. So I talk all the time about living close to nature the majority of the time. So if you're living further along, which is all the processed and crappy foods full of simple sugars and that, well, that, that's not going to work for you. That's not going to help it. But having balanced meals that have the right balance of uh, good proteins, good fats, good fiber, good carbs, that's the key. And I'll throw a link in the show notes to, you know, the guts of the kind of foods that I eat. And really excited, I just announced on social media today that I am releasing a cookbook. I, I put my recipes up on social media all the time and I keep getting inundated by people saying, Jen, when's your cookbook? Well, give us you know, more recipes. Well, I'm going to do it. So I'll also put a link in the show notes where you can go and uh, throw your details in and you'll get some juicy extras that other people won't get when it's published by being subscribed to it pre-publishing. And my goal is that it will be out before Christmas this year. So yeah, look forward to that. I love food and I love showing people how simple it is to make yummy, good food. Make sure you go to the show notes to get that link. That's where it's going to be hiding. And you know, I was going to get around to talking about stress and hormones. It's just a reality, guys. We have to do, we have to talk about it because it plays such a part. Like I said, right near the start, stress can make people lose appetite and it can make people emotionally eat and get way bigger appetites. So I have to touch on it. And sadly, food has become a way for so many people to handle stress. It becomes like an avoidance that we kind of, you know, we're trying to suppress it and shove it all down. The stress and the emotions that are activated with it. Because when we're stressed, we activate our adrenal glands and that fight and flight thing happens. The cortisol goes through the roof and your body's just going, give me anything I need. Give me that instant kind of fuel so I can, you know, get out of here and keep running. And when that happens, people crave carbohydrates and fats. The carbohydrates they generally crave are the shitty sugars. So this is why people want to devour chocolate when they're stressed or they'll reach for the, the soft drinks or whatever it is. We've got to get our body to be able to adapt to the stress. We can't make stress go away. We've got to get our body to adapt to it. So in the show notes, I'll put a link to my the shows where I've talked extensively about adaptogens they are the class of herb that helps our body to adapt to stress the other thing i want to talk about when it comes to eating is mood eating and i've touched on it in the past and this is all about the, our glycemic index so in past podcasts i've talked about sugars and the influence of it but if we because what happens is if we're having or the classic time where people will, their appetite is like screaming at them. It's like, give me food. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. And that's generally because you had a meal that, you know, didn't have the right balance of good proteins, good fats, good carbs in all balanced up together. And so blood sugar levels have been spiked. You got that dip an hour and a half later and two or three o'clock, you're looking for a sleep. 
So it's really important that we're balancing up our, our GI, the, you know, the GI foods, the glycemic index of foods, so that we're not getting these crazy sugar spikes as we go along. Really important. And the food that influences those kind of sugar spikes the most is da, 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 refined and processed grains. And in episode four, I talk about no bum glue. If you have not listened to that one yet, please go back. If you did nothing else in life, nothing else, but changed the, you know, the carbohydrates that you're having and, and carbohydrates are good for us guys. They're what give us energy, but it's got to be the good ones. Go and listen to episode four and learn about bum glue because that is the highest influence on our GI, our glycemic index. That's it. And if you are the person who has had sugar cravings in the past, check out episode 16, because that's where I talk about how to get rid of all those kind of sugar cravings. So I've kind of covered a lot of stuff in today's episode. I want to leave you with four healthy life hacks. The very first one is to identify what's going on. If it's stress that's driving your appetite, deal with that first. Get into the adaptogens. Go to the show notes, check out my link to the, to the stress tonic that I take from prevention. And it doesn't matter if you have lost your appetite from stress or whether your appetite has gone off the charts from stress, you still need those same herbs. Healthy life hack number two is what kind of plate are you eating off? Is that feeding your out of balance or is it helping you out of balance? You might want to change the dinnerware that you're eating off. And number three, come from a place of prevention. So if you know that there's a time of day that is just throwing off where you're forgetting to eat, set an alarm to remind you to eat. If you know there's a time of day that you are overeating, your appetite is off the scale, set an alarm beforehand so you can eat an hour before and be prepared so that you don't go out of balance. You, please come from a place of prevention because healthy life hack number four is you are in control. Please remember that you are in control. The way you're going to come back into control is to come from a place of prevention. If you want to get a copy of the show notes where all those links are, head over to www.healthylifehacks.com.au and remember to subscribe because in the next episode, I'm going to be talking about, do you want a reasonable life or do you want an extraordinary life? I'm going to be talking about both and how to get the one that you truly choose.